So I am now starting the game to come. Now this weird um, um, dark mage, you don't really want to start the game until later, so I guess that's the point of the story. And uh, now because this is a 1.0 character chances are the screen sh the screenshots, not the screenshots, the cutscenes might be a little bit different um, and one thing to note about 1.0 characters is that they have a, a tattoo on the back of their neck which is not there for brand new characters it's just like a way of saying that yes you, did, you survived the calamity which was when the world ended so let's see the story Now, it doesn't matter which town you start in, this guy is always here to greet you and tell you um, a little bit about the game. of the game are voice acted. Ideally it's just the, the main scenario and special cutscenes. It's not all of it. Because it obviously would, the game would be about 500 terabytes if it was all voice acted. And we would wait about 10 years for the game to come out. Now these twins do have significance in the story, but you don't find out until much later who they are. So, and even until now, I don't know who they are, so I'm still waiting to see. But well, that's the point of the game: is to find out, to discover a brand new world that you're now a part of. Now uh, this question um, does not really affect anything, it's just down to your choice. So, why did you become an adventurer to gain power, to win glory, or to amass a fortune, or it's three dots, which just means meh. It gives you a slightly different response depending on what you select, but it doesn't affect anything else in the game.
So you have this uh, question, is this your first trip to whichever town? And in my case, no. But you would get a little bit more information if you're, the answer is yes. But, you know, the game is about discovery, so to do um, which you prefer. I will be showing you around anyway, so. The Black Shroud, the ancient forest, close to the heart of Eorzea. Beneath the boughs of its towering trees lies the woodland city-state of Gridania. Once a sanctuary from the world beyond the hedge, even the mighty elementals, eternal guardians of the forest, could not forestall the coming of the Seventh Umbral Era. However, the goddess Nofika was never one to forsake her children, and today she welcomes another brave soul. One who may yet play a telling role in the tale of this great realm. May the matron take her to her bosom, that she may never want. And in her heart, sow serenity, purity, and sanctity. There we go. How's that for an introduction? Um, it's a bit different to obviously any other game, because it is an online RPG, but um, this is still a lot better than it was in 1.0, definitely. So now stepping into Gridania for the first time, well since the relaunch at least, um, the, the point basically of these moments, the reason why the introduction might seem so slow, is just to get you used to the idea of the world and so on, just so you're not thrown in straight in and then have no idea what to do. So the game really is designed to lead you in slowly. So like the, the first few quests are so simple, um, just to really get you used to how the quests work and so on. So this guy will question who you are, and why are you here, and then send you on your way. So we are now logged in. So to move the camera around, you use your left mouse button to change direction, you can use your right mouse button. So right now I can't move just because this message is here. I'm going to be using keyboard and mouse. 
So as you can see here, to move forward, back, left and right is WASD, pretty standard. Or to move forward, you can just hold both the left and the right, right mouse button at the same time. To jump, press space bar. To turn your character, as I said, you can hold down right click and move. Or to, to move only the camera without moving your character, you hold down left click. Now, my issue is, the reason why this is a bit different, is because my character was actually a level 20 archer, so I'm not starting from fresh, I'm reviving my old 1.0 character. So let's take a look through the interface. By pressing C, you get to this, which is the character um, menu. And as you can see, it talks about all your stats, and now there's these messages which tell you what each stat does. So we see here, strength affects physical melee damage as well as damage prevented by parrying and blocking. Dexterity affects physical range damage as well as parry and block rates. Vitality affects maximum HP. Intelligence affects attack magic potency. Mind affects healing magic potency. Piety affects maximum MP. Okay, and what you also get when you're leveling up is a bonus. So this bonus here, where it says 8, it means I have 8 points I can redistribute. So what you do, you click this button here, and then if I want to add more to, say, the de dexterity, I just simply do it like this. And um, this is good for an archer, because an archer relies on dexterity, so... Accept. So now the bonus is gone, and my dexterity has gone up, So because I am ranged, so... Now, what you can also do, you can just look through all of these and see, just if you're interested really, how each one affects. Then you have here, profile, which just talks about you and so on. Also, we'll have here information about your um, grand company later on, which I'll get to. And here, some titles. I don't have any yet, so I'll get to that. Uh, classes. Now, these are my classes as they were. So, as you can see, 20 Archer, level 6 nearly everything. It's because I did actually spend the time to um, try nearly everything in the 1.0 before I quit, even all the professions as you can see, uh, but I still quit anyway because I just really didn't like how 1.0 was. Let's see, currency, I have 33,000 gil, which is good for a start really because usually, well, you usually start the game with zero, so it's a nice little boost for me. Um, let's see. So what you can do as well with these buttons, just for the sake of um, the character, you can hide your weapon if you want to. And here, this button, you can hide your headpiece, but I'm not wearing one, so it's kind of irrelevant. Um, so what you can do is, when it comes to equipping gear, you select the slot, so that, for example, let's select the head slot, and then, should you have any gear, it would be in here that you can select. Now all of my gear is actually probably stuck in my retainer, so we'll get to that. Now, the, for phase 4, the level cap is actually 20, so because my archer is already level 20, it's, it's sort of pointless doing anything on it, so what I'm going to be doing is switching to Conjurer, and getting um, that during beta phase 4 to 20, and then after that I'll see what else I might level. So. Really, I do spend my time to make sure everything is looking okay before I even set off on my adventure. Let's see, armory chest. So this tooltip here does talk a bit more about the armory system and how it works and equipping gear. We'll get more into that when I actually have some gear to put on. Now one thing that you can do is every aspect of this um, screen layout you can now change. Oh, so this here is your your inventory. So you see here, now this is all my original gear um, from 1.0. Most of it is a complete mess, so I do need to spend the time to fix my, uh, my bags. Um, and I also have a retainer which has even more gear, which I'll, I'll also get to. Um, so this is what I need to organize. Now this little red X means that you cannot equip this item. Now, for example, this item here, even though it's an archer item, 
the reason I can't equip it is because I'm too low level. So it says requires level 21, but I'm level 20. In the original 1.0, you were able to wear gear which was not your level. You just weren't able to take the maximum statistics from it. Whereas now, uh, you have to be the level required for the gear. Which is, in my case, means that nearly every piece of gear I have, I can't wear because I bought everything which is a bit too high level. Right, so one thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit my layout of my um, of my screen, and the reason why is just to make it a bit more usable um, and add a bit m more action bars because I don't feel there's enough at the moment. So under this setting, you see you have the option to add more hot bars if you wish. So I'm going to add two vertical ones. Now the positioning is not that great, so um, in order to move this stuff around, what you do is you go to here, press escape, and then press HUD layout, and it lets you move everything around. So I'm going to move this stuff around. One second. So as you see, it simply is just a case of drag and drop. Um, and you just move everything where you want it. I apologise for the length of this video, it's just a case of getting into a new world and making sure everything's set up before we set off on the adventure. I'm just moving the stuff around. Now the reason I'm moving um, these bars down is just so I feel there's more space. Now one thing at the moment is that the health bar seems to be at, um, for the monster is at the top of the screen, but your health bar is all the way at the bottom, which means that it can be a bit weird when you're trying to look at one and the other. So if you're trying to stay, keep an eye on, on both your own health and the monster's health, it was a bit strange. So this is the reason why um, I'm going to be moving it like this. So I've moved my health, my own health bar up, and then the monster's health bar I'm going to move down to here. So I can keep an eye on both at the same time. Uh, so let's see. So far, so good. Obviously, with time, if you find that things are not as you like, then you can just come back in here at any moment and just change it again. Try this for now, and if it's not good, I'll just change it. Probably move some, some couple of things.
I just need to add in another vertical, no, no, sorry, horizontal hop bar. And the only reason I'm adding so many is just because later on I might need it, you know. So now I have a lot more options without taking up too much of the screen. So, almost there. Okay, so you can also resize this window just by dragging this here, which is probably a good idea if you want to read what people are typing to you. And if you want to move the box itself, you click this portion here, and you can drag it. At least you used to be able to. Once I work it out, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll move it. So we're now ready to go, so let's start running around. Now the reason there's no one else on the screen, you don't seem to find any other adventurers, is because until you've completed a certain point in the story, which is literally the first couple of quests, you won't see anyone. And it's just to make you feel safer in the world. So, let's go, let's do this. Sorry, a little bit jittery. It's probably because it's preloading a few things. So anyone that has an exclamation mark over their head, you right click so that you can bring up their quest window. So once you have a quest and you've read through the description, you can accept it. accepted my first quest, so what I need to now do is says speak with uh, Mion. Now you can see this symbol here on the map um, showing me generally which direction to go, but to load up the map press M. You can resize the map as you wish and the good thing about this map as well, you can move it anywhere you'd like and if you are running in the background it fades so you can see where you're going. You see now I'm running so I can make sure that my character is moving towards the right location. So I'm now heading towards the target in order to turn in this quest. So, um, the game does a good job of giving you these notices about where to go, what to do and so on. So it really will hold your hand at the beginning, telling you how to get every, everything done. So this is the part of the game I like to call the peace before the storm. All Final Fantasy games start with relative calm, relaxation, and just to slowly get you into the game. But then, when the adventure starts, it will not end for a long time. So this is the moment to take a breather and um, take things slow before the real action starts.
of the general citizens of the town, they're not that nice um, because they don't know you, you're just you're new to their town. So as the story goes on, the more you serve the town, the more people start to like you and know who you are. to complete the quest, simply click complete. Now, the main scenario quest is the main storyline of the game. Which, as it says, is denoted by this distinguished symbol, this meteor symbol. So usually when someone has a rectangle over their head, it's just a simple, plain yellow, whereas this one has a meteor symbol. And this is how you identify which is the main story quest going forward. So she's now going to have you do three simple tasks before um, you can interact with other players. There you go. Here is the world. Here are all the players. Now finished the tutorial of the game. So it's now a case of doing the first few quests and really getting into it. So again, it talks about the map and navigation. You can read through these at your own leisure. Take your time if you're new to this. And that's it. So, welcome to Final Fantasy XIV. Good luck.